An interesting situation for a peer counselor to deal with. A consumer comes in the center. It obviously, the, the person has been drinking and is being very aggressive towards the peer counselor. Jeff, how would you expect your peer counselor to deal with this type of consumer? Given the very high incidence of substance abuse amongst people with disabilities, we run into this scenario more often than we would care to. I think that it is important that uh, your consumers be aware of the promise that you make that we won't come to work drunk if you don't come to where we work drunk. And I, one of the issues I had um, with the scenario was his approach of the staff person as his counselor and he wanted her to do something for him. I. I find little value in trying to teach self-advocacy, which we are, we are advocates, not so much counselors. I see little value in teaching self-advocacy to someone who is inebriated because it is very likely that um, they will not remember uh, what was talked about in, in terms of their plan to address their issues. It's a very difficult question. So what should this peer counselor do when, when looking at this situation? What are the options that she, they're looking at? She should refer to our program manual in where we address the issue of how to deal with intoxicated consumers and uh, how to extricate yourself from really potentially awkward or if not dangerous situations. And what would one way be? Uh, one way would be to talk calmly to the individual and uh, get them to agree that perhaps now is not the best time to address their issues, but when they come back sober, we'd be happy to help them. Okay. Lily Beth, how would you hand expect your peer counselors to handle the same situation? Um, when I was watching this, I had a couple of things running through my head. Um, first. I'd like to make sure that the counselor really listens. It's very easy to make presumptions about someone who looks drunk, you know, um, especially for people with disabilities. Um, they get mistaken for drunk when they actually have a disability. So that's one thing I would, I would hope that my counselor would put a checklist on herself. Do not make presumptions. And now if it's pretty clear that this person is is drunk, then you try to diffuse the situation, um, make the person feel that they're listened to, and then find a way to explain that you can handle this better um, when they're sober. You have to make it clear that um, independent living also attaches to it responsibility. I cannot give you what you need if you're not ready to take on what I think and what you think, what we both agree, is your responsibility. Because to carry you through your goal of independent living, we both have to do it together. What about the aggressive behavior of the consumer? Well, that concerns me too. Um, the peer counselor has to make sure that she's protected. And so, um, you know, you help, yes, but you make sure that you're safe. So you, you go back to what you've learned in training when you got your employee orientation. You seek help. You do self-protective behavior uh, without, you know, necessarily escalating the situation by being overreactive to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a situation where both the consumer and the peer counselor need to step back and look at the situation and identify responsibility and, and who and what and how you're going about solving the particular issues that you may be facing. Now, it's your decision.